Hello, my name is Paul, and I want to show you some of the best practices and latest pro tips for designers working in Photoshop. These tips are definitely going to help your workflow immensely. In fact, just starting with a new document, oftentimes uh, when you're creating a design, designers will drag out guides. Uh, maybe an 8-grid or 12-grid layout is often what would happen, and you don't really need to do that. In fact, you can do it much easier by going to View, right down here, New Guide Layout. Selecting that, you guessed it, you have this guide layout now that you can easily change from 8 to 12 and even adjust the rows and columns. You get the idea to really set up your layout the way you want to. So it's that easy when you're working with a grid layout when you need to lay out things in an organized fashion. Alright, so let's say for instance you're already working and say for instance you have a shape that you've drawn as well because you can even take any shape, whatever layer is selected, and you can create new guides from that shape. As you can see, easy enough, done and done. In fact, you can dive in and start to, you know, use those guides as I'm doing right now, say drawing out a bar for some information. In fact, here's another pro tip, just holding down the Alt and Shift key, as I click and drag, look, I get these guides as well. So I can drag this down and make sure it kind of snaps into place wherever I want it to be right there. And even dragging down the next one, you can see it snaps into place, saying they're about 103 pixels apart. Okay, so when you're laying out items, it's really easy and really efficient when it comes to uh, placing elements. In fact, uh, I want to place some more elements from another file. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to place an embedded file. And I'm going to go out to this JPEG, happens just to be uh, this mountain right here. I've placed it accordingly. In fact, you can see it right down here, right here. It's actually a smart object. So I can double click on it, and that's the full image. Now what I can do is if I want to put that inside of this circle, all I need to do is make sure I'm creating a clipping mask. So from there, that gives me the opportunity to move this around. In fact, I can scale it down since it's a smart object. It's not going to uh, destroy or delete any pixels. It's going to be non-destructive, so I can always resize it if I want to. And not only that, but that circle I can adjust as well. So you can see the flexibility and control clipping masks give me. All right, so let me just jump ahead to this design so you can see how I've progressed it accordingly. And notice how you want to make sure you're organizing your content in layer groups as I'm doing right now. I really like this yellow frame right here. Well, all that is is just a layer mode. So it's actually a yellow frame that's set to overlay and you can see that nice effect that you get. So I'm going to continue working. In fact, I'm going to use some elements from some other files as well that I've actually created in Illustrator. And whether I've created them or someone else has, I can place linked files. Okay, so if I'm working with an Illustrator that's created this mountain range, I can link to that Illustrator file and then I can always update it later and my PSD will update as well. So dropping that in, in fact, that's part of this peaks mountain range, so I'm going to make sure it's in that folder and positioning that accordingly just like that, okay? And since it's linked, if I double click on it, notice how I can open it in Illustrator and work on it. Not only that, I can create items in Illustrator as expected, but really what I can also do is I can use Creative Cloud Market to find assets. So don't forget about that, which is exactly what I've done in order to uh, get a hold of this tree. So I can also take something that was created in Illustrator, copy it, and then paste it as a smart object right in here, move it into position, and again I want to move it just right down there into the right spot. That looks good for my design, but let's talk about typography now because what I want to do is I want to add a title up at the top. In fact, I'd create a new folder and I'd call it title, and this is going to just be some black text, and I'll just type in Yosemite. There it is, selecting that text, increasing the size, and yeah, I'm not really pleased with this font. Well, if I select the type tool, and in fact moving that over some, all I need to do is be on that layer, and I can quickly change that font. And preview 
it uh, for whatever font I roll over. In fact, what I want to do is I want to filter by typekit fonts. So you can start to see that font change, right? So I'm seeing that font change based on these typekit fonts. Well, where did these fonts come from? Well, I got them from typekit. In fact, right over here, click, and you can jump out to typekit, sort by desktop use. Maybe you want a sans serif that has different weights, where well, you can just select those multiple weights, find the font that you want. Say, for instance, I kind of like this Fira sans, seems somewhat unique, so use that font, sync it to my desktop, and it's gonna be available in Creative Cloud and available in all of my desktop applications. There it is, Fira Sans. All right, with that done, let me jump back in here. There's my font. I don't even have to uh, restart Photoshop or anything, but you can see right here, here's my Fira Sans font. So really, it's all about selecting the font that you want, maybe adding additional adjustments, but really, once you get something you like, you probably want to reuse it, and that's my case often uh, as I go to create the next poster. I actually want to save all of these various settings. I don't want to have to go through that whole process each time. Well, I want to introduce you to Creative Cloud Libraries. These are actually my assets that are synced to Creative Cloud available for me in Photoshop, in Illustrator, as well as other places. But really, all I need to do with this font is come over here and add that text style. There it is, there's my text style, right in there, just double clicking, and I can say this is the poster title. Call it whatever I want, but there it is. So now, if I ever add new text, I can apply either that style or another style to it, like I'm doing right now, just to drop that into place and make sure that's looking good. So you can see there are many new features like the new guide layouts, fonts, Creative Cloud Market, and my favorite is Creative Cloud Libraries because I have all my assets available at my fingertips in Photoshop, in Illustrator, synced to Creative Cloud. Try it out for yourself and have fun creating.